Oh. Hello everybody, I hope you're all doing great. I'm Johan Smith, a wildlife and nature photographer from South Africa. And as you can see, I'm down here by the river again. I've been here for the last few days, every day. And uh, basically the whole day, I just sit here and shoot the birds. Because uh, there isn't school right now. Um, and I'll show you just footage on how I got here. And uh, because this is a very nice spot right here. Um, we had to clean up some of these uh, the, the reeds, so that's not great for bird photography, but I'm actually glad because here, this, where I'm standing on right now, this was a small island uh, with this big tree on it uh, that was dead, and um, oh, there's a small bird just jumping through the reeds. Um, but uh, when we just uh, moved this ground, we covered up the the path that went, that blocked the island from our like land. And so now I can come here, and this is actually a very nice spot. Look, I'm standing like basically water level, and so I can get down very low. And there is uh, quick starkies, I don't know what they're called in English. And I see they have a nest right there, and so I see them jumping over these rocks, and I got a few pics. Uh, the last few days so that's amazing and um, hopefully today we can catch them as well and this is just a very nice spot um, I'm kind of isolated from our place I have to come through the reed but that's actually very good um, so this is a nice place for all the birds to come and basically are the only place in this uh, section of the river so this is actually a very good spot um, I will show you that my gear and then we will just wait for something to come and see what I can do Okay, so here I have my backpack. This is a kind of an old backpack But uh, I bring it along well to carry my stuff, but also to sit on because I don't want to sit in the mud So the backpack I don't really care it can be there uh, I have my binoculars They're all covered in like foam because uh, over the years, they uh, got, they were very old and so the rubber became so sticky. So I covered it in this foam and it's actually, it's actually a nice texture. Uh, texture. And then I have my camera and my uh, Yeti. I don't know what that cool in English. I think it's a slingshot, but uh, not sure. Okay, so the quick starkies. I don't know what they're called in English. I will put the name on the screen. Uh, it's there, nest that is right there by that stump. Uh, they come on these rocks and they jump around, fly around on them, uh, eat some bugs or I don't know, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's bugs that they eat from the rocks and like in the water that they eat from the rocks and sometimes they would fly up and like flutter around, around a point and then they, they catch a bug that is floating down the river and uh, they will get that and that could get me very very good shots here are also some rocks right there that they can come to which is in the sun and that will definitely give me a lot of light to get a good shot um when they're flapping around but it's it's very hard to get that shot because i'm zoomed in at 300 mil and uh even though i still crop a lot at 300 mil it's very hard to keep them in frame when they suddenly just jump up and uh, fly just very uh, rapidly around to catch something in the water and then I'm using manual focus because uh, I, uh, I'm much better at manual focusing than my camera is at auto focusing I would not say like precision stuff like um, my camera is faster if I just solidly focus on a big stump or something like that auto focus is faster but with any action or something, uh, this camera doesn't have a setting where uh, if the autofocus doesn't, uh, some some bigger, uh, more professional cameras have a setting where the camera will shoot even if the autofocus isn't locked on yet, the camera will shoot anyway. And the autofocus will just try to keep up with the bird or whatever. This camera doesn't have that setting 
And even if he did, I would never get a shot that's in focus. Not with a small bird that suddenly just flaps out and uh, like flies around and uh, very rapidly. And so um, I'm way better off with, with manual focus because otherwise I wouldn't get a shot. Um, because the autofocus, it doesn't register that anything is in focus and it tries to focus on the water that's uh, very... That, that's very reflective and <laughs> nothing works with autofocus so i'm definitely using manual focus i will get back to you when that bird comes and i can show you the images and i also want to shoot a bit of stock video so uh, or just video but i plan on putting it uh, using a uh, stock footage and maybe make a bit of money from that oh It's a water runner. Oh, I think that's the name of it. We get some video ISO 100. Another reason I use manual focus is in video. My Nikon, most Nikon cameras, and especially these. Okay, there's the Quick Start also now. Most of these cheaper lower end Nikons are really the video autofocus is terrible, so it just won't give me accurate or any usable autofocus or footage as any in um, in any way. So manual focus also works. Just is the only thing that works for video. So. Uh, I'll stop for now and get back to you. Let me just take a moment to thank my sponsor, me. No, <laughs> just joking. Uh, please, if you want to f uh, support me somewhere, please go down there. Uh, check me out on Facebook and Instagram. And check out my website, please. All my best work are, is up there. All my wildlife images or some of the best ones are up on my website. And please, please go follow me on Instagram. That is my biggest uh, social media account right now. And I really want to grow it. I'm almost to 400 subs, uh, followers. Please go check it out. Please go follow me. Um, my best, best images are up there. And you will really get inspired by it, hopefully. So, um, yes, please go check that out. Um, let's continue photographing. Uh, some Egyptian geese right there over on the Lucerne. Oh, there they're going. Hopefully I got an image. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, okay. Missed all of them. Forgot to put my ISO back on 400, I mean. Um... I was shooting video and I dropped the ISO and I forgot to put the ISO back on 400 so the, all the shots are quite blurry and I should also get some minus 3 exposure compensation down there because I don't know <laughs> uh, I just want to prevent the highlights from blowing out these birds are the, the quick starkies are quite bright also or they'll have bright parts uh, they, have, they have a white a chest so I don't want to blow that out 
and uh, the Egyptian geese, I think that's what they're called, uh, call haunts. They also they have white uh, white parts on their front uh, leading edge wing on their wings. And so I think I clipped that no matter what the shutter speed was. Um, I didn't have any exposure compensation dialed in. And so I think I should have. I think the, yeah, the Kukstarki is just on the other side. This might look very big, but, oh, uh, it's actually just, uh, 30 meters to, to the, uh, to there. It's just 30 meters. So it's, so it's very small or very, not a big spot here. And, uh, unfortunately there's nothing on that side that is very photogenic or, <laughs> useful as a background I should say because I mean there's houses up there uh, my, uh, okay there we go there's houses up there um so it's oh okay let me just check if I can get a shot here What was that? Oh, I saw. No. Okay, there's one great shot. I don't know if you would be able to see that. There we go. Wow, I think that's a great shot. My eyes was I I I um uh, when they flew right on that side, I dropped the ISO um to one hundred, and so um I uh, I thought I'll just get the focus back. There we go. I thought I um I, w I wanted to try to get a blurry shot with the background blurred and the the bird was sharp. And so I dropped the ISO to 100, and then when they come around, these two, they are permanently here, just, just on the side. When I come here, they just blow, blow, blow at me, like, <sighs> they make like that. Um, so I kind of disturb them, but uh, they will get used to me. Um, they're all already kind of used to me. And so there are other two that flew past, and so these two uh, synced up with them and just flew around and then came to landing and I saw these two are turning and so I dropped my uh, uh, picked, uh, try to lift my ISO back to 400 but then I saw 400 in the viewfinder already and I guess that was actually the shutter speed let me check yes so that was actually my shutter speed that was 400 and I thought that was the ISO and so yeah typical rookie mistake that is not a mistake I should have made because now my shots aren't the sharpest. I think their their wing uh, leading edges might still be little clipped. Might still be a little bit clipped because of the bright right. There is a kind of a good shot with a short bird and a good background, but or a blurry blurry background, but it's not great. So um. Next time, I should look at the right side of my viewfinder and not at the left side. Oh, at least I got a good shot. So, people, this is wildlife photography. You won't always get the best shot. And it takes thousands of images to get to get one good image. And it also takes thousands of bad images to just learn to get a good image. And still, I mean, there, I just... I shouldn't have gone... For that blurry shot, I don't know why I did that. It's they were anyway a little far, so that was just a dumb decision anyway. But anyway, so wildlife photography is a lot of patience. It's a very it's it's you learn every day, and it's just not 
some people think it's like going to the river 10 minutes and you get the great shots of the eagle flying through catching a fish in the water and a I don't know what a crocodile biting a bird in mid-air or something like that no it doesn't work like that it's days and days or weeks even sitting getting nothing but all bad images or nothing and then sometimes the good image comes and if you're prepared or not it depends on luck or not and also um, your skill level so that's just what what wildlife photography is and especially birds are actually hard subjects to photograph they are very erratic very demanding on the autofocusing system which is me in this case um, I've definitely missed a few shots there okay there quick stack it comes let me just get my ISO to 400 okay anyway I'll get back to you um, the viewfinder is not the greatest for manual focus but anyway I got a good shot okay so, uh, let me just get a silhouette shot there. Um, hopefully you can, oh, hopefully you can hear the sound they make. So tip if you're shooting small birds like these, if you see if you see they are looking in a direction um, side to side move your camera to that side already to the frame so that if they start to jump or fly you are ahead of them uh, you have a head start um, so this could help you prevent uh, losing them in the frame and uh, if you see they are looking towards you like in this case and there aren't any rocks in front and they might fl jump or fly over try to set the autofocus or manual focus in this case to a little bit uh, in front of them so that they fly into the plane of focus and therefore you not missing the focus and not your uh, oh there's a hardy dog just staring at me um, and you, the delay of your uh, your reaction doesn't cause the shot to be out of focus but rather they jump into your plane I think this one might be coming oh no he's going or is he going or coming I don't know here we go the Hardy Jar just announced that he is here and everyone should know anyway, There's a bird there that I've never seen before. It's grey, the red beak with the long tail and with black around its eyes. Kind of looks like a, a parrot or something. Very weird. I don't want to uh, get it out of my viewfinder. And I don't want to look at the images because if it flies, I want to take an image. There we go. Now oh, it's gone. So. Oh man. Oh, it's kind of a dove. It's a white dove or something. Come on. Oh, not one in focus shot. Oh, there we go. Let's 
just sit and wait. <laughs> there are some weavers up here, but uh, they are quite boring. <laughs> right again, uh, the finches and the weavers are not the most exciting subjects. I have a lot of images and they are kind of, some people don't even like them because there are so many. It's like Adidas here in South Africa. So, okay, the quick turkey is back. <laughs> Sorry I'm using the Afrikaans word, but, uh, yo. Yeah. So, I'll get back to you if I get an image or something exciting happens. Okay, so I think I'm going home now for a while just to eat something. It's about. Uh, come on, okay. It's about 12 o'clock. Um, so, as you can see there, here we go, the sun is right there. Now it has to pass through there. So, this place is going to be. No, it's not in the shadow totally right now. But it's going to be in the shadow for a while now, for about the next hour, I think. Uh, maybe an hour, yeah, maybe an hour um, before the sun can pass the tree. And maybe it hits uh, that branch also there. And then we get shadow uh, casted here again. But, uh, yeah, the wind is coming up a bit, which is fine. Um, but, uh... Yes, I think I'm going, let me just turn around, I think I'm going home now, and uh, come come back just now, um, when I'm done eating, and uh, when the sun is back, hopefully we can get something, otherwise I'm going to share some images that I took over the last few days also, um, on the video, so, uh, I think I'm going to put that, the, the, the images on the screen that I took now, and maybe when I come back later, we can put those images on later. But uh, anyway, let's go. Okay, so I am back. Uh, I came a little too late. Um, so the sun was already uh, past. I was busy at the time, so um, nothing too exciting. Uh, only the uh, think they are there. Yes. Um, the the Egyptian geese, I think that's what they call in English. Uh, anyway, they uh, that's basically the only thing uh, I can show you from now. But uh, nothing too exciting happened. But I'll show you the images of yesterday, and also the images of today. Uh, so thank you for watching, and please go subscribe, like this video. I'm going to do a lot more of these videos uh, where I take you along you can actively learn from what I do in the field so I think that would be very very good idea to do a lot of these videos so thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video